The problem with saddles is there's no one perfect saddle for everyone. For years, I dealt with pain, sores, and general discomfort while in the saddle. But there's a new kind of saddle making its way onto the market that claims to change this. And because this video is sponsored by Competitive Cyclist, I've been able to try several of these saddles firsthand. And the results are very surprising, which I'll get into in just a moment. But first, I wanna go over the three key elements for avoiding saddle pain. First and foremost is a proper bike fit. If your bike doesn't fit, all kinds of things can go wrong. Something as simple as saddle height can have dramatic effects on where pain shows up in your body. This can be resolved from trial and error or by going to a professional bike fitter. The next thing to consider are proper bibs. Cheap low-end bibs are a waste of money and they're gonna do little to nothing to support you in the saddle. You're looking for something mid-level or higher. My favorite current mid-level bib is the Ornot Work Bib. It comes in at under $150 it's climate neutral, the chamois is great, it's made by cyclists, it's got a cargo pocket, what more do you need? And for those who like the finer things in life, <laughs> my favorite higher end bib right now is the Gore Distance Bib 2.0. The fit is terrific, the material feels high end, the chamois is one of the best I've ever ridden. For a $200 price point, this is actually a pretty good value. The third and often overlooked element for avoiding saddle pain, specifically saddle sores, is proper lubrication, otherwise known as chamois cream. While some people only need chamois cream on longer days, other people will need it every time they go on a ride. If you suffer from saddle sores, try chamois cream. Is that a tagline? Is that actually a tagline? Now we're talking saddles. Some people swear by leather saddles. My personal experience is that they take a dramatically long time to break in, they are not weather resistant, and they don't offer a cutout for the perineum. The para what? The perineum. You know, no man's land, that space between your, hmm? the taint, the gooch, the grundle. Oh yeah, the grundle. Why didn't you just say that? This area can be sensitive for all body types. So having the cutout, whether you need it or not, can help. I mean, it can't hurt. It won't hurt. It does not hurt. For most people watching this, I would say that we lean towards the performance side of cycling. And if that's not you, well, how the hell did you find us? Who spilled the beans? Was it Tev? This is people that are going for rides that are an hour or longer. In which case, I urge you to avoid at all cost squishy, cushy, foamy comfort saddles. All that foam creates a lot of movement which can create pain in strange places, chafing, and a general discomfort. Do yourself a favor and avoid these saddles at all costs. If you've ever shopped for a saddle before, you'll realize that it comes in different sizes. This is the result of big cycling, intentionally confusing the general public, creating convolution in the marketplace for no general purpose. To find out which saddle size you'll need, take a piece of cardboard, lay it on a flat, firm surface, sit on it for a few moments, then measure the distance between the center points of the two indents in millimeters. After you get that number, add 20 or 25 millimeters. It's generally between one of two sizes. Mine comes out to 120 millimeters, which means I often select the smallest size available in the model that I want to ride, which means I'm often riding saddles between 140 and 145 millimeters. TMI, it's a reference point, which is exactly the sizes I've been testing out in these new 3D printed saddles. The Specialized Power Mirror, the Physique Vento Ergo R1, and the Italia SLR Boost. I believe that these saddles are gonna solve a lot of problems for people. Here's why I like them. There's no break-in period needed. 
The lattice structure creates zonal cushioning throughout the saddle, resulting in pressure distribution unlike any other saddle I've ever ridden. It's cool. Which also means it's gender and discipline neutral, meaning any body, any type of bike. That's a bold statement. Hmm. They're breathable, incredibly light, resilient, and weather resistant. Plus, they just look so cool. Of all the three I tested, I found the Physique Adaptive R1 or R3 to be my personal favorite, just slightly edging out the other ones in price, comfort, and aesthetics. But really, they're all legit. It's just personal preference. I love this thing. I want it on all my bikes. And if you want to try any of these in person, use offer code DUSTIN15 for 15% off your first order to competitivecyclist.com. You can get the specialized mirror saddle or the Physique uh, Adaptive, but then there is the SLR 3D Boost. You're gonna have to make that decision. I don't think I can, uh, I guess I already did. While it's impossible that these will work for everyone, my hope is that they help a lot of people. And if you're ever on the fence about upgrading some crazy part of your bike, just think about how much time you spend on your bike. Or if you've already gotten that upgrade and you feel like justifying it, maybe you just need to spend more time on the bike. Yeah, there's logic somewhere between here and there. This is all information and resources I wish I'd known about years ago. So my hope is that it helps you on your cycling journey. Honestly, it's that simple. Now that the saddle's figured out, the last thing you gotta do is check out this video where I teach you the six easiest tips to conquering your first century, or your first double century, or your first triple century, or your first quadruple, whatever your thing is. They're there, just for you. Or you can watch this POV with these fresh licks to get you prepared for your next session. Don't stand here, Baro. Hey, are you talking to me?